constraints or something, Lord, but you are healing us. You are giving us strength. You are making us stronger than ever. This year, oh Lord, will be a year to reckon. The year of yes, harvest, God. Lord. The harvest is ready and Lord, we are ready to go out as you say. Thank you, Lord. I bless you and magnify you as we start this evening and we know that you are with us all the time and we bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. One and two more people before we jump into our next segment as the Lord leads. Just a thanksgiving praise. Mighty and great is your name, O oh God. Yes. I come to you with thanksgiving in my heart and in my mouth and on my lips giving mm. you thanks for all your many favor your blessings father for all the persecutions that you have brought me through mm. you said many are the afflictions of the righteous but you god will see us through so father tonight i just come to you just giving you thanks big Thank you, you up for all your many blessings yes seen and unseen dangers that you have protected us from you have kept us god and so father i will continue to trust you because you yes. are god Whose yes is yes. And mm. so, Father, I bless you and I give you thanks in everything. In Jesus' name, Hallelujah. amen. Hallelujah. 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 Welcome those that are coming in. We see again Sister Christina, who's back with us from St. Thomas. God bless you. And there is... Um, okay, I just saw some other names popping up. Sister... Sue, uh, if you can pop in and greet us and probably turn your camera back off, we'd like to greet you in the name of Jesus. Initial SD, we welcome you. We'd like to say hello and greet you as well in the name of Jesus. We're just in our Thanksgiving prayer sex session of our night. God bless you. If there's not anybody else, I'll just read this passage and then somebody else could pick up and pray. Um, this is Psalms 34. And this is basically what we're doing right now and what we should be doing continually. Psalms 34 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Hallelujah. His praise will continually be in my mouth. Sometimes we say other things, but Brother Joel for the last six months or more has been encouraging us to keep the word of God in our mouths. And here the psalmist is reminding us, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Big him up, Sister Sandra just said. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord. And he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and was lightened and their faces were not ashamed. The poor man cried and the Lord heard him. Listen, we're crying unto the Lord. The poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamped round about those that fear him and will deliver them. Thank you, Lord. So, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man and the woman and the prayer group that trust in him. Finally, verse nine, now stop there. Oh, fear the Lord, all ye saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The word of the Lord God is blessed. And so before we go any further, I'm going to ask Sister Monica, a beautiful nurse out of Houston, Texas, to close out our prayer session. God bless you, Sister Monica. Thank you. Sister Monica, can you unmute? Can you dismiss the prayer seg seg segment? Thank you. Yes. Father, we lift you up on high. We praise your name. We glorify you. We Hallelujah. You. 
You are the great I am. You made heaven and earth. Yes. Father, when I go outside and I see the canopy, I, I think, what a great God. Mm. What a great God. Great and mighty. Anywhere yes. in this world you are, you are under the same canopy. God, we thank you. Thank you. For and you know each of us by name. Thank you, Father. Each of us by name, you know how many hairs on our heads. God, we thank you for this session. We thank you for this meeting where we can all get together in your name to praise you, to study yes, your word, to get to know you better. Mm. Father, thank you for the opportunity. Thank, thank you for you, your Jesus. blessings. Those we are, as Sister Sandra said, those we know of and those we not, we do not know of, but we know mm. you here. Yes, God. You are carrying us through, even in the pandemic. Mm. Thank you, Father. Bless each one who is online and those who are yet to come and those who are not able to make it wherever they are. Please meet them at their point of need. Jesus, God. Jesus. Bless Brother Joel as he brings the word. Help us to, to consume that food mm. as bread, Lord. Help us to understand it to chew on it, mm. to put it into our memory, Jesus. wear it on our foreheads, Lord. Jesus' name. So we get to know you better. Father, these mercies we're asking in no other name than Jesus. The name of Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Amen. You, Bless Lord. you. So we transition now to Brother Joel. And again, we're going to ask that um, you would mute unless you have a comment or a question um, we are noticing it, it's doing something to the recording of the segment. God bless you all. Good night, sisters and brothers listening. Um, it is so good to have you with us tonight, Sister Colin, out of, uh, out of New York. Good to see you. And it's so good to have Sister Sandra back and Sister Alice back. And of course, Sister Vesper is in New York. She sent word out saying that her brother, her brother was ill. <laughs> by the grace of God and by the stripes of Jesus, we know that he is healed. So we give God honor and glory and praise for that tonight. Um, we, for the last couple of weeks, we have been talking about the Holy Spirit, but tonight, we are going to drill down into the different gifts of the, of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to do that by first examining the three revelation gifts. Now, the three gifts of revelation are the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and the discerning of spirits. Let me, let, me, let me go through them. Three gifts of revelation. There are actually nine gifts, but interestingly enough, they, they are tied into three different groups of three. I find that very interesting. Um, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and the, and the discerning of spirits. So as we will see, from our study tonight, God reveals information only known by himself, Jesus and the Holy Spirit to men and women. Now, this heavenly information that God gives through an individual is information that would have been impossible for any man or woman to have ever known. This information would never have been, have, would never have crossed the mind of any human being. This information has never been heard by the natural ears and it has never, be see, never been seen by our two eyeballs, our natural eyes. The word of wisdom. Let's begin with the gift of the word of wisdom, which is supernatural revelation about the divine purposes of God. 
Now, the gift of the word of wisdom, which is the first one that we're talking about tonight, is a message to the church from God given by the Holy Spirit. It is not to the believer. It is through a believer. Now, in this powerful gift of the word of God's wisdom, God gives just a small portion of information from his everlasting, overflowing storehouse of wisdom. Now, let us understand that God's wisdom, God's wisdom has to do with the future. Keep that in mind. His wisdom has to do with the future. So this word of wisdom that is revealed by the Holy Spirit would not have been in, in existence before. It has not been in existence yet. So when God gives a word of wisdom, he is revealing something that has not yet come to pass. Is that clear? Okay, so every prophet in the Bible, every prophet in the Bible possess this powerful gift and prophets today also possess this gift. Now, the gift of wisdom unveils in part God's purposes on the earth. That is what the gift, the, the gift of, of wisdom does. Now, the Apostle Paul explained the wisdom of God this way in 1 Corinthians 2.7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before, before the world unto our glory. Okay, so the gift of the word of, of wisdom is given specifically to speak about the hidden things of God. Things which we would not normally or naturally know. Remember, this is not just the gift of wisdom, right? But it is the gift of the word of wisdom. So the word of wisdom that is given is a small fragment of the total wisdom of God. You see, it is just like how, you see how a letter is a fragment of a word? or a word is just a fragment of a sentence. That is, how, that is how little we get. So the word of wisdom is a part or a portion of the great omniscience of God. Now, when we talk about the, the omniscience of God, we're talking about God that is all knowing. There is nothing that he doesn't know. He's all knowing. We're talking about infinite knowledge, no limit to his knowledge. So it is very difficult for us human beings to realize that God is all wise and that God knows the total past, the total present, and the total future. And he knows all of this at the same time. So when God speaks a word of wisdom to the church, and we're talking about the body of Christ, through one of his members, through one of his members of the body, God has made that person wise, and hear this now, in just one matter only. God did not make that person wise concerning all things. So when a person receives the gift of the word of wisdom, that person does not suddenly become a brother or sister know it all. That does not happen. It is good to know this, that we do not become brothers and sisters of know, knowing it all when we get a word of wisdom from God. Now, this is important, and it is really good to know this so that we can stay humble and avoid the destructive sin of pride. It has happened so much and so often in the body of Christ. You would be surprised and shocked at how many people have actually destroyed themselves 
because God was using them and they saw themselves as important sometimes as God himself. So this is why we thank God for the gifts of the Holy Spirit, because the gifts of the Holy Spirit can function in a person who has achieved great academic success or in a person with little or no education. And the gifts of the spirit functions exactly the same way. The gift of the word of wisdom, it has power. And it has power that can transform the world in which we live right here and now. So this power in operation will cause the world to stop, Sister Valerie, and pay attention. But as we would realize, the devil also has a counterfeit for everything that God does. For example, the devil functions in people who claim to be able to read the future. So these people are counterfeiting what God wants to do through his people in this earth. God certainly wants us to know the future. I'm going to read John 16, verse 13 from the New King James Version to, to show that, to prove that. Listen to this now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. Listen to this here now. For he will not speak of his own authority. Not even the Holy Spirit could do that. Never mind us. The Holy Spirit will not speak of his own authority. But whatever he hears, whatever the Holy Spirit hears, he will speak. And it goes further where it says, and he will tell us of things to come. So understand that. Like the Holy Spirit, we should only speak what we hear God say. And that is confession. That is confession because that gives a voice, our voice, to only what God says. Remember what the centurion said to Jesus? He said, speak the word only and my servant will be healed. Notice Jesus said that, what he speaks is what he hears his father say. And we just read that the Holy Spirit is doing the same thing. He, the Holy Spirit, will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak. So we need to pay attention and keep a watch on our mouths. Because we, if, if Jesus is saying what the Father says, and the Holy Spirit is only saying what he hears, then we also should be only saying what the word says. Here is what is important. The word of God is saying that by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. Our, 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 our doctor just told us that we have a very serious illness. That is not what we are supposed to be speaking because God is never going to say that we have a serious illness. So it is crucial that we do like Jesus, we do like the Holy Spirit, and we do like God himself because God, God speaks and that's it. And even the Apostle Paul was telling us the same thing. Follow me as I follow Jesus. So, so, so we're supposed to be following the instructions that comes from God when he speaks. So I believe, and I'm sure that you all do too, that it is time for this gift to function in a way that it has never functioned before in the history of the world. So when this begins to happen, when this gift begins to function, when this begins to happen, there will be no need, no need, my sisters and brothers listening, no need for fortune tellers. There will be no need for crystal ball gazers. 
Ouija boards, tea leaf readers, palm readers, and all the other devices of evil practices that the devil uses. There would be no need to use these things to deceive the majority of people who want to know what their future is going to be like. You know how many people who want to know what their future is going to be like? Am I going to get this job? I'm going to get that job. Is, is there some, some, some difficulties down the road? They want to know. And we're in, a, we're in a situation where we have that privilege to be able to know based on these gifts. So we, the church, needs to start moving in the spiritual gifts of revelation. The spiritual gifts of revelation, as we said earlier on, is the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and we're going we're gonna to get a clear understanding of how they're functioning, the word of knowledge and discerning of spirits. The word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the discerning of spirits. So the entire world now is overrun, you know, by a wave of black magic and witchcraft. And this is happening right in our own neighborhoods where we are living. And one reason for these counterfeit operations that are keeping people depressed and defeated is that the church, us, have not properly operated in the gifts of the spirit. We have actually not used the weapons of our warfare, the gifts of the spirit that, has been, that have been given to us to stop the devil's counterfeits. So we all, members of the body of Christ, should be challenged by these urgent needs to go and seek God so that the, 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 the major gifts, these major gifts will, will assist those who are in need of deliverance. And there's so many of these people around us. Now, 1 Corinthians 12, 31 says that we are to covet earnestly these best gifts. Covet is what the Bible is using. Now, there is a commandment which says thou shalt not covet. But here the Bible is saying covet earnestly the best, the best gifts. And these three gifts happens to be the best, the best ones. So if we will seek these spiritual gifts with all of our hearts, we will find that they are available to us, available to us according to the word of God, that God is saying that these gifts are available to us, right? So through the gift of the word of God's wisdom, God makes us wise to the future, and we will know what is going to take place. That is the connection we have to the kingdom of God. So we have to find a way to make that connection so that that spirit can be released in us. So instead of worrying about the future or, or working at making the future come to pass, which we try so hard to do, we should let the word of wisdom function through us so that things will happen exactly as God told us they would. I'm saying tonight, Lord, we thank you for the gift of the word of wisdom that you have given to us. He has given it to us. It is us now to receive what we have been given. In the Acts of the Apostles, we see these gifts functioning time and time again. We went through a number of them over the last two weeks. Now, this is proof, though, that these gifts will function for us because we know that God is impartial. By that, I mean God has no favorites, which means that what God did for Paul, he's going to do for both for all of us. So the gifts that functioned in the early church, those gifts are available to function today. And when I say today, I'm talking about right now. 
The Bible says that we only need to covet them. And how do we do that instruction? How do we do that instruction, Sister Glenda? Mm. You know, I like to pick on you. Oh, Lord. <laughs> how do we covet those gifts? Yes. By studying his word, what he say about certain things that come upon us. Um, if we know what he says about a particular thing, then we can acquire it. But mm -hmm. if we don't, if we don't know what he says about a particular thing, there's no way we can covet it. So what, stick a pin. So you're saying the first thing we need is knowledge. Knowledge. All right, continue. Knowledge. We need knowledge, but number besides knowledge, we need understanding. Okay. Because without knowledge. With, with knowledge, only knowledge and no understanding is no how we would know what it says. You're right, right on target. So the power that operated for the Old Testament men, right? Like Noah, remember yes. Brother Noah? Yes. Ezekiel, Daniel, David, and even Joel. I see my name there. And Isaiah is the same power that is available to us today. Each and every one of us. All of us. That same power is available to us. Now, God is doing something. God is not doing something special through the operation of spiritual gifts today that he never did before. Did that before. Did no, the it's the same thing. Same thing. Same thing. It's the same when yesterday, today, is the same today, and in the future. Thank you very much. So, if we were to harness these powers, right, and utilize them as God God wants us to, we can actually change our communities in which we live, and the entire world, for that matter. Now, these men were not just selected individuals, you know. They were not special people in whose footsteps we ordinary Christians could not hope to walk. All they did, Sister Valley, the works that are recorded in the scriptures is totally available to all of us. Okay. So all of the prophets of the Bible, all of them, were empowered with the gift of wisdom. Now, they were seers, right? Now, now seers is spelled S-E-E, -E. see, seers. There's, they were seers of the future. And they were making known God's wisdom about what would come to pass in the future. All right? So, let us look at a couple of examples, very interesting examples here. Now, look at Noah. God revealed to Noah the coming of the flood, right? And we can read that in Genesis 6, verse 12 and 13. And I'll read because you're going to have the tape afterwards. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. So no one knew, no one knew, Sister Monica, no one knew for 120 years, 120 years, Look at how much visibility he had. He knew for 120 years that God would destroy the earth. This was the gift of the word of God's wisdom. So we have a clear understanding now of the gift of the words of God's wisdom that was functioning here in Noah. He received only a word of what God was going to do. Look at Daniel, the prophet Daniel. He had great visions. Daniel actually saw empires grow from nothing into prominence. 
and he saw some of them got destroyed as they all made their mark on human history. And before a lot of these nations that he saw, that Dan Daniel saw were born, Daniel named the very nature that these empires would have. Could you imagine that? Da Daniel saw some of these nat nations of having the nature of lions, some of them bears, leopards, and, and different beasts. And that was the gift of the word of wisdom in operation that caused Daniel to know these things. We have the same privilege. Now let's check out David, the man after God's own heart. David revealed through the Psalms how the Messiah would come and how he would die. It was a revelation of the future as we would read. Now, if we're not going to read Psalms 2 and 22, but when you get a chance, check it out. And it gives you exactly what Jesus would have suffered. Now, let's look at, look at my namesake, Joel. I mean, no pride, but I'm just saying, when the prophet Joel prophesied that in the last days, right, God's spirit would be poured out on all flesh, as we would read in, um, in Joel 2.28, he was revealing the future all the way back then, which is what is happening to us now. And that is our discussion because the Holy Spirit is being poured out. So a word of God's wisdom was being brought forth. And that is happening right now. Now, let us look at the prophet Isaiah. In, in Isaiah 53, this contains one of the greatest prophecies in the Bible. The, greatest, the great prophet Isaiah actually described the nature of the Messiah, Jesus. He described what kind of person Jesus would be. And the, he actually described the way Jesus would die and what Jesus' death would mean to us. Isaiah even wrote that by the stripes of Jesus, we would be healed. Now, in Isaiah's day, stripes were not known. Stripes were not known as a part of punishment. Right? Stripes were not known as a, as a, as a form of punishment. So this was the word of God's wisdom functioning through Isaiah. So the word of wisdom in the New Testament was foremost among those demonstrated, dem demonstrating the word of wisdom. And it was foremost in the ministry of Jesus Christ. Now in Mark 24, Luke 21, and Mark 13, scriptures that you would read when you get a, a chance, Jesus foretold the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem, which came a few years later and the signs that would accompany his return to earth for his church. Many of these things are coming to pass in our generation, and some of them definitely have not come to pass yet. But these prophecies from Jesus is what the word of God's wisdom is. And again, we're trying to learn and understand that it is a revel revelation of the future. Now, the New Testament, as we know, is filled with many instances of the gift of the word of wisdom being manifested. And I'm trying to get us to get a good understanding of each one of these, these gifts. Now, in several epistles to the church, right, the Apostle Paul actually revealed things that would come to pass in the last days. So there are a number of things that are going to happen. We actually see some of them taking place right now. Now, the Apostle Peter was very emphatic about signs that would come to pass before the Lord Jesus returned as well. So let us look now at how wisdom, let us look now at how wisdom is manifested, right? Now, the Holy Spirit can convey the word of wisdom in many ways. For instance, let's, you look at Joseph. The gift of the, the, the word of wisdom for Joseph was the interpretation of the future by dreams, right? 
So what happened here is that when Joseph was 17 years old, God showed him the entire course of his life. So Joseph received the gift of the word of wisdom that he would be great, he would be a great leader and that even his own brothers, you know the scripture, would bow down before him. But nobody believed him. But, but everything that he said came to pass. So that again is how the word of wisdom functions. It is always talking to the future, right? Daniel received wisdom by an uh, received wisdom by a night vision. It was the word of wisdom that was projected into the future. We saw Ezekiel also who was caught away into the, in the spirit for a revelation. And also what we have is what we what I found very interesting in the study is that is that the apostle Paul was caught up in the spirit on the Lord's day. And the entire, the entire book of Revelation flashed before him. That is how we got the book of Revelation. So God has no set ways of dealing with the problems of this world. God unveils hidden mysteries, right? And the wisdom to execute what he wants, his counsel, in the way he considers best at the time. So many times we think Jesus can do things only one way, but that is not true. That is not true. And the same is true with the word of wisdom. The word of wisdom does not have, ha, does not have to function the same way every time. It can function as a dream or it can function as a vision. We would even be caught up in the third heaven as Paul was. Look at um, for 2 Corinthians 12, 2 and 4, and I read it for you. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body, I do not know, or whether out of the body, I do not know. God knows. Such a man was caught up to the third heaven. Third heaven, right? God created the heavens and the earth. Is more than one heaven. Here he's talking about being caught up to the third heaven. And I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows how he was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. So God has many ways to do things. God can work with each of us in very unique ways in ways he has not operated in before. God can do whatever he wants to do. He, he is God. Okay. Now, a clear distinction, eh? Okay. This, is, this is crucial. A clear distinction must be formed in our minds regarding the simple inspirational gift of prophecy and the word of wisdom. Look at 1 Corinthians 14, 3. It gives the full measure of the blessings of prophecy. So there is no element of revelation associated with prophecy. And I'll read 1 Corinthians 14, 3. But he who prophesies, I'm sorry, Sister Dion isn't here tonight because she has, she has an interest in this. But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men, right? So any, anyone who speaks out in the church, for instance, who is foretelling the future has left the simple gift of prophecy. They're not related. So that person has moved into the greatest revelation gift, the word of wisdom where they foresee the future. Now understand that what I'm talking about here, about the Holy Spirit and these gifts have been given to us. As we were saying last week, that we have to find a way to make that connection, to flip that switch as it were, so that, so that the Holy Spirit will function in our lives 
exactly the way we saw it functioning in scripture. Now, the prophet of either the Old Testament or the New Testament, as we said before, they were seers, right? And they see into the future because they possessed the gift of the word of God's wisdom to tell the future. Right? Okay. So the second gift, the second gift in that grouping after the word after the after the, the word of wisdom is the word of knowledge. Now let's deal with this one here. The second gift in the category of the gifts of revelation is the word of knowledge, which is the gift of the word of knowledge. Always see them as the gift of the word, the gift of the word of wisdom, the gift of the word of knowledge. So there should be no mistake, no mistake whatsoever about the word of God's knowledge and our human knowledge. There should never be any mistake. They're not the same. The word knowledge, as we know, is related to fact, to know something, right? If a thing is knowledge, then it is not mystery. There's nothing mysterious about something if you know the knowledge of it. Right? So the gift of the word of knowledge actually deals with what exists, whether it is in the past or it is in the present. In the gift of the word of knowledge, God reveals to one of his servants something that now exists or did exist on the earth. This must be something that the person could not know naturally. Something his eyes have never seen and his ears have never heard. So normally, the word of the gift of knowledge would have to do, this is, how it, this is where it functions, it has to do with meeting an emergency. Gift of wisdom, future, Gift of knowledge is given to meet an emergency. This is so important. So God would not reveal such a thing if there were no purpose for doing so. So here are some examples of the gift of the word of knowledge operating in the Old Testament. Let's go there first. And we're looking at Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 19. Now, I'm, 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 I'm looking from verse 14. Beginning verse 14, he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, right? Thrown down thine altars, God's children now, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And, and Elijah is saying, and I, even I, am left, and they seek my life to take it. Now, we can say that Elijah was a little discouraged. He thought he was the only prophet left, right? This is just how Elijah felt. He felt that he was the only prophet left. And the Lord said unto him, go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, he's telling him to anoint Hazel, Hazel to be king over Syria, and Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elijah, the son of Shaphat, of Abel-Mehola, Abel shalt thou anoint to be prophet in your room. So God is now removing Elijah, Elijah and bringing Elisha into existence because God is telling him to anoint Elisha to take his place, all right? Very interesting situation taking place here. And it shall come to pass that him that escapeth the sword of Hazael shall Jehu slay, and him that escapeth from the sword of Jehu shall Elijah slay. Okay, now verse 18 is interesting. Where God is now telling Elijah, I have left seven thousand seven thousand in israel all the knees which have all of them have none of them have bowed their knees unto Baal, and every mouth none of their mouths 
have kissed Baal. So here we find a prophet named Elijah, who of his own knowledge, and that is why it is so different, so important that we don't mix up our knowledge with the word of knowledge. Right? So, 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 so we see here that um, the prophet Elijah, who is of his own knowledge, said to God, you know, there is not another good man living except me. Right? Now, this is a strong statement to make, especially when you're talking to God who knows everything. So Elijah said that all the preachers are gone, basically. I'm the only preacher left. But then God revealed to Elijah. This is how the word of knowledge works. God revealed to Elijah a word of knowledge. God said to him, you said there wasn't anyone left except you. And God says, look, I am now revealing to you through the word of knowledge that I have 7,000 more prophets. Not one of them has, has bowed their knees to Baal. Not one of them has reached over and kissed an idol. So Elijah had been out on his own and did not realize, did not realize that God had an army. God then revealed through the word of knowledge that at that moment, at that moment, there were 7,000 men in Israel. 7,000 prophets in Israel who did not bow their knees to bear. These men stood up straight and they refused to take part in idol worship. They were God's wonderful servants for that hour. And hear this now. God knew their names. God knew their addresses. And God also knew their abilities. So Elijah knew nothing about what God knows. So God had to reveal to him supernaturally. We don't know what God knows, but he would reveal to us. He would reveal to us things through his word. So that is what is meant by a word of knowledge. God reveals something that you do not know naturally. I want us to look at a very interesting story. And I guess after when we when we go through this then we'll open up for our discussion and now this is this is elisha and the story is in second kings from verse 20 to 27 right um Eli elijah as we know remember elijah god just told elisha to go and anoint elijah to take his place what right? chapter brother so, Second Kings chapter 5, from okay. verse 20. So Elijah now had su succeeded the prophet Elijah, who had gone unto heaven. You know, Elijah went by a chariot of fire. He never died. Right. Okay. Uh, all right. So let's, let's, let's dig in now. Second Kings chapter 5, from verse 20. Let's dig in. But Gehazi, Gehazi, the servant of Elijah, the man of God, said, look, my master has spared Naaman, right? Has spared Naaman, this Syrian, while not receiving from his hands what he thought, what he brought. But as the Lord lives, I will run after him and take something from him. What happened is that Naaman came to the prophet Elisha because for, for help, because he was a leper, right? So he came and he had to dip in this, in this, in this, in this river, this dirty river, seven times. That was the requirement. And his leprosy left, right? So now Gehazi is trying now to do something that is terrible. And he does not realize that the, the power of the word of knowledge. So look at what is happening here. So after, after Naaman left, after Naaman left, <laughs> we have a situation here where brother, where, where Elijah's servant, verse 21, so Gehazi pursued Naaman. So when Naaman saw him running after him, 
he got down, he got down from the chariot to meet him and say, and he asked, is everything well? Is all well? And Gehazi, Gehazi said, all is well, my well, all is well. Listen to this. He's telling him, my master has sent me saying, indeed, just now, two young men of the sons of the prophets have come from the mountains of Ephraim. Please give them a talent of silver and two changes of garments. Now, the, the, <laughs> Naaman wanted to give the prophet an offering right or pay him for his healing and elijah said no i cannot charge you for your healing it is god's blessings now we see a lot of we see a lot of stuff happening in the church today and we have to be very careful you know we have to be very careful send money for your healing send money for this send money for that that's that is so unscriptural so naaman said Na Naaman said to him, now that he's, he, he caught up with him and he's asking him for these things, he's lying, saying that, that, that somebody should, that, that he's, he's lying on Elisha, saying that Elisha sent him to ask for these things, which Elisha never did. So Naaman said, please take two talents. And he, Naaman, urged him and bound two talents of silver into two bags with two changes of garments and handed them to two of his servants and they carried them on ahead of him. So, so, so Naaman's servant, servants now is taking these things that Elisha never asked Gehazi to get. He's taking them back now, right? To, to, where, to where Gehazi lives. So when he came to the citadel, he took them from their hand. That's, that's, that's Gehazi took the, 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 the stuff from the hands of, of, of Naaman's servants and stored them away in the house. And he let the men go and they departed. Right. Verse 25 says, Now he went in and stood before his master. And Elijah said to him, Where did you go, Gehazi? Right. And he said, your servant did not go anywhere. Could you imagine that? All right, all right. Then he said to him, did not my heart go with you when the man turned back from his chariot to meet you? It is, time, is it time to receive money and to receive clothing, olive groves and vineyards, sheep and oxen, male and female servants listen to what happened now because of what he did verse 27 therefore the leprosy of naaman shall cling to you and your descendants forever and he went from his presence leprous as white as snow. The gift of the word of God's knowledge was operating through Elijah. Elijah watched in the spirit realm as Ge Gehazi took those goods. Now this man Elijah had a most remarkable manifestation of the gift of the Holy Spirit. So let's talk about Gehazi for a little bit before we look at another interesting development with, with, um, with, with Elisha. Let's talk about, let's, let's talk about, about Gehazi and Elisha. The question I'm asking, and uh, Sister Sandra, you could jump in here. The question I'm asking is. Why? Wh wh why? Why? Why do you think? Why do you think the prophet, the prophet refused the gifts that Naaman brought to him? 
Now remember, Naaman came with leprosy and he brought gifts because he was a very he was a very powerful person in Syria, and he brought gifts for the prophet. He got his healing, Sister Sandra. Right? Mm -hmm. He's giving the prophet gifts, and the prophet is saying, "No, you can't pay for God's blessings." Mm -hmm. So, 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 why isn't he taking the gifts and because, refusing them and making that statement? Because he doesn't want to take um, God's credit. He doesn't want to get paid for what God does. Doesn't it's want to get. His, it's not his. It's not his. It's not his. Him doing the healing. It's God doing the healing. So he would not want to take praise or pay for something that God does. Mm hmm. That is exactly what it is. It is God. No man can heal anybody. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe that's why. Maybe, maybe that's why we have so many problems. Because we hear so much about sending money so that I can pray for you, so that you can get your healing. What is wrong with that, Sister Val? You're muted. Again, Sister Sandra said it so well. It all goes back to um, wanting, you know, we want people to praise us and bow down to us taking credit that belongs to God. She, I couldn't say it much better than she did. Taking what's due, uh, the, the praises and the thanks and the glory goes to God, not to man. And so, you know, we, we can't do that. We should not, you know, they send you a handkerchief. I'll bless it and send it back. Nonsense. But we fall for it, you know. But you have to send an offering with it. Exactly. So but, it's not working. No. But so, I mean, look at look at the outcome, man. Look at the punishment. Let's talk about let's talk about the punishment a little bit. And we had mentioned before, you know, to generation to generate your descendants. So what we do could damage generations to come. And the leprosy of Naaman shall cling to you. Not just to you now, it's passing down to your generations. Not just to your generation, but forever. <laughs> wow. Okay. There, there's a sister, Sister Su Swabi, you have your hand raised? You have a question or a statement? No, 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 sorry. <laughs> okay, okay. So there has to be something wrong. There has to be something wrong. Another name they said hand raise is Smith. Is that the same person? No, that's another person. Okay. Smith, Sister Smith, Smith, you have a question? Sister Alice, your input. And on the on the powerful word of knowledge that is available to all of us to know exactly what is happening around us. Unmute. Unmute. You're still muted, Sister Alice. Can't hear you. You're muted. Knowledge. Knowledge. Okay. Go ahead, Alice. Yeah, this is all so philosophical. And I'm trying to understand. The two principles, wisdom and knowledge, are really so philosophical and I'm trying to wrap my head around the difference between them. The manifestations. Yeah, I can really like know that Elijah healed Naaman, but I'm not 
still like knowing the the aspect of knowledge in how this transcends like to be known like knowledge so i'm okay. really a little like seeing trying to see how to get into this philosophy well it's 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 or oh, you won't hear last week it's really not a philosophy now the holy spirit right mm -hmm. was given to us by 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 god right jesus yes. asked the father to send the holy spirit and the holy spirit is taking jesus's place but as you know as you know as you know the holy spirit now right yes is is living in our bodies when Jesus was here, Jesus occupied his own body and he moved around so you were able to identify Jesus in person. Now, for us believers, we have been, we have been given the Holy Spirit to continue Jesus' ministry. That is why we are referred to as the body of Christ. Right. Now, in the Old Testament, we saw the same functionality of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Now, we're dealing with three, the three key revelation gifts. One is wisdom, right? And what yes. we were covering before is that wisdom, wisdom speaks about the future. And nobody has that information but God but he reveals it to the body of Christ and it comes through the members of the body of Christ. Okay. So wisdom has to do with the future. So all of the, all of the prophetic words, right now that there are two kinds of prophecies. There is prophecy for comfort. When someone speaks in the church dealing with, with, a, with a situation that exists, that is not the same as the gift of 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 um, the gift of of the minister of the gift of prophecy that we're talking about here, the gift of wisdom. Sorry, that we're talking about here because the gift of wisdom has to do with the future. Any everything that has to do with Jesus is coming, and all of the things that that you remember we, we spoke about um, Joel and his prophecy about mm -hmm. the 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 um the holy spirit falling on and filling everybody in the last days and then it started on the day of pentecost yes okay that is the that is that wisdom. is the, with us wisdom future wisdom right now yes. the word of knowledge now is what we're talking about which allowed elisha right Okay, let me go. But we had another example of the of 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 the word of of um the word wisdom. Of, of wisdom, of knowledge. Sorry, where 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 um the word of knowledge that has to do with something that exists, right? The word of knowledge has to do with something that exists on the earth, but we don't know, and the only how we could know. Right for God to reveal that to us. Uh, uh, for instance, Elijah was saying that he was the only prophet. And God revealed to him through a word of knowledge that, that no, you're not the only one, the only prophet. There are there, there is 7,000. 7, that's the word, that's the gift of the word of knowledge that the Holy Spirit manifests through us. Now we were talking about Elisha. Now Gehazi, El we're talking about Naaman, right? You, now you're talking, you have two things happening here. We have the gift of healing that took place, mm -hmm. right? We have yes. the gift of healing that took place because Naaman had leprosy, right? And there was a little girl, young lady who worked in, in the house, in the house yes. right? Okay, and she told Naaman about the prophet Elisha. 
So Naaman came to visit Elisha, right? Mm -hmm. For Elisha to get rid of his leprosy. leprosy yep. Right. But he came with money. He came with, with gold and silver and whatever it was to, to give to the man of God because he was expecting that the man of God would basically tell him, lay his hand on him, right? And tell him you're healed. But no, he told him he had to go into this dirty river, right? And dip seven times. So he went once, nothing happened. And, and he, did, he did not want to go. But then that was the only solution that was available to him. Right? So sometimes we have to humble ourselves in order to receive. Not sometimes. Every single time we have to humble ourselves. Yeah. So he humbled himself and fall. See, once you are in humility, Sister Alice, you're following the instructions of God, you know. Amen. Because... <laughs> Pride goes before what? Fall. Fall. Pride goes before destruction. Mm -hmm. And destruct and right. And before the fall, the fall. Okay. Destruction. So, so humility. And, and we know we know who is the author of destruction. Who's the author of destruction? It's the devil. He comes to kill, steal, to destroy, steal, and to destroy, to destroy. destruction. Okay. So, so he had to humble himself and follow the instructions. That is basically part of our problem. We're not following God's instructions. I mean, sometimes yeah. if you hear us pray, we want to give God instructions. Hmm. We can't give God instructions. We okay. are created. He is the creator. He knows everything that we're supposed to do. And what he has done now by giving us the Holy Spirit is to allow us to be in a position, right, to function exactly the way Jesus functioned when he walked the earth. And that is correct because we are members of the body of Christ. So everything that, look at, look at our own bodies, right? If, if I have a pain someplace, my entire body if it knows it. Yeah. Because yeah. all of the members of my of our body, all of the members of our body are one. They're all one. They're all connected. They all function and work together. Right? So the gift of knowledge now, as it relates to, to, to Gehazi and Elijah, is significant. Because here it is that this guy, this guy left and followed the prophet. prophet. That's crazy. That is, listen, verse 20 is crazy, Joel. Follow him. Follow and him. That's, and that's like, asking that's like, for stuff for himself. Because what he's saying is that crazy. I'm not going to let this guy bring all this thing to, to Elisha. And Elijah is not going to take it. So mm -hmm. I am going to go get it. And in order for him to get it, he had to lie on the prophet. Mm, 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 mm. So he lied. And that's how we bring, bring damnation on his own self. Verse 20. For doing that. Yes. Look, the, look what he brought to himself and his generation. But, oh but all that he was doing, all that he was doing, the word of knowledge was operating. Isn't that something? <laughs> that somebody is trying to hurt you. Mm. And Jesus. you are able to see through the gifting of that spirit every single move that that person is making. Yeah, it therefore means that our human knowledge is limited, but with the Holy Spirit, we can... We have unlimited knowledge. Unlimited knowledge. We can explore, we can know, because I think that's how Elisha knew that his servant had followed um, Nehemiah to go ask for gifts or some money in return. So, yeah. Go ahead. So I'm just trying to see that, yeah, because the Holy Spirit lives in us, we can have the potentials of knowledge. 
we can have we can do more we can know more because how even how did elisha know that this guy can be healed by going into the pond the dory water seven times so now i feel like when the holy spirit is filled in you it can reveal you the reveal knowledge to you amen. that is not there before amen and that is what that is what it does. Yes. But, but do you know do you know the difference between Elijah and us? I think it's because we are not using the Holy Spirit in us. We are not giving mm. way for the Holy Spirit to manifest in the presence of the things that we need done. We claim that we can do them by ourselves or we take the glory unto ourselves and we do not allow the holy holy spirit to operate in us a fundamental difference between elijah and us is that the holy spirit came on them for specific missions hmm. okay i remember that from last year it, the holy spirit <laughs> never lived with them like how he is living with us in, us. in mm. this new this dispensation of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. We are in a better position than Elijah. Oh no. Mm. In a way, those guys, when I say that, they had partial righteousness. So the Holy Spirit did not indwell anyone permanently it was until like after operative. the day of Pentecost. Yes. Okay. Now this is what this is what we're trying to get an understanding of, so that we can begin to function like the Book of Acts. You miss, you won't hear for the last two weeks, but the the, the stuff is up on YouTube. Mm -hmm. In the book Book of Acts, they turned the world upside down because of one thing: they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now, we have received the Holy Spirit by simply asking God for it. But somehow or the other, we're not making that connection. And you know what the biggest problem is? That's no. preventing us from making that connection? Self. And when I say self, it is selfishness. Selfishness. Excuse me, Brother Gerald. Did you read um, Sister Smith's um, comment for you? No, no. Could you read it for me? Sorry, you could not hear me. This is Sister Smith. I, it was not the prophet's desire to take a gift. It was not his heart or interest. So he refused the gift. The punishment right. was severe to the servant, but we cannot play with God and his holiness. Amen. 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 Very, very powerful. I'm sorry we couldn't hear you to get your comment. Is she still on? Are you on, Sister Smith? Say something. Unmute. Touch your mic. Um, Sister Smith. Uh, yeah, you probably could do it, Joel. If you click on the 12 people at the bottom, you could undo her mic. I've given everybody permission, so... Oh, okay, so she yeah. probably did it off herself, and yeah, she has to do it herself. She has to do it. Okay. Yeah. Good comment. Yeah, very, very, very good. Okay. Yes, she's, she's still there. Okay. Yeah, very, very full, very, very powerful comment. But, 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 what I like though is that we have, we have supernatural ability. Mm. And that's what we're trying to understand. But so, so there are a couple of factors Be besides besides self that is preventing things from happening. We we still need knowledge because if we don't have knowledge, we have issues. We're ignorant. What you don't have knowledge of, you're ignorant of. I can't fly a plane, so as far as that is concerned, I'm totally ignorant. And you can't just come and lay hands on me and say, Brother Joel, we're going to Trinidad. You go in the cockpit and fly that plane. That ain't going to happen. <laughs> that ain't going to happen. 
a, a chariot of fire, yes. <laughs> That might work because we saw that working for Elisha, but any other thing like that is not going to work. So we need to get knowledge, and that's what we're trying to get because we really need to be able to function based on what the word is saying. We need to be able to function. That's the desire of our hearts. But we have to get self out of the way. The Holy Spirit and self just will not work together. And I've been praying today, Lord, whatever it is that is in my life that is preventing me from making the connection to the Holy Spirit that would cause the Holy Spirit to flow through my life, to be able to do the things that God wants us to do. Let that happen in Jesus' name. So is it a little clearer now? Because the, the, next, the next thing that we're going to tackle is, is uh, not, not, not now, but next week, we're going to talk about the other, the, other, the other gift, the other revelation gift. That's I, know, I know we're close. It's the discerning of spirits. We'll yes. get there next week. I, I don't want to go, go past 9 o'clock, really. But um, the word of wisdom is not just for the prophet, it can be anybody in the church, correct? The word of wisdom is not for anybody. <laughs> when I say it's not for anybody, in terms of its functionality, it's for every member of the body of Christ. Okay, okay. I was and it misled. Is really, it is the, actually, it is the Holy Spirit that selects when that is to be used. Okay. The word of wisdom, when that, when that, the Holy Spirit, actually the Holy Spirit is the one, you know, who brought all of these nine gifts, right? And the Holy Spirit is the one who teaches us. Remember the Holy Spirit is our teacher? Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit teaches us how these gifts function. And the Holy wow. Spirit operate these gifts mm -hmm. through us. Um, go ahead, Sister Alice. Sister Alice, your hand is raised. Okay. Yeah, and, and the Holy Spirit operates these gifts to us. Sister Monica, I haven't heard from you. She's getting ready to do communion. Okay. Well, we thank the Lord for another Monday and another, we want to welcome those, our new friends that are on the line. And just to let you know that every Monday when we meet, we pray, we spend time in the word and we end with the communion remembrance, giving thanks to God for what he's done for us on the cross. So we ask that you bring a piece of cracker, a piece of bread, water, wine, whatever you want to bring with you every Monday night. And that is how we close our time together, remembering the sacrifice. So at this time, I'm going to mute as I turn it over to Sister Monica to do the, the prayer over the elements and to dismiss us tonight. God bless you, Sister Monica. Thank you. Um, are we ready? Yes. Okay. Um, in John fifteen thirteen says, Greater love has no man than this, that one should lay down his life for his friends. Greater love has no one like this, that a man should lay down his life for his friend. And we, saw, we see this in Jesus, God gave his only begotten son to die in our stead, to take on our sin. He was without sin and he took on our sin and paid the ultimate price. Now, um, the night, the same night that Jesus was betrayed, he was with his disciples and he took bread and after praying, 
he broke it and told his disciples, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he gave, he said, eat. Now, Father, we thank you. We thank you for your broken body, Lord. For your stripes. You were without sin. You were God. You came down, left your throne, and came down to pay the price for our sin. There was no other way, Father. You made a way where there was none. You gave your son a sacrifice. Thank you, God. Our sin. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Now we have healing, soul mm. and body. Yes, sir. Soul and body. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. We did not pay yet. You paid the ultimate price. You said it is finished. Yes. Thank God. you, Jesus, for accepting it. Mm. Thank you. We eat. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Then he took the cup and he said, This is the new covenant in my blood. Yes. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Father, thank you for your blood. Yes, God. Now we have a new life. We are new creations. Mm. Thank you. Yes, we sir. are free of sin. Sin and past, present, and future. Thank you. We are heirs to the kingdom. We can come blameless to yes, you, God. God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There is nothing, no yeah. sin that is too great that the blood cannot wash away. Nothing. You yes. said you remove our sin as far as the east is from the west. And you remember them no more. Thank you, Father. Yes, God. Because now we have a hope. We have a hope that we will see your face and we will yes, stand God. in front of you blameless. Because we have the righteousness of your righteousness in Christ. Thank you, Father, for the blood. Thank you. We will drink. Father, we come before you humbly. Yes, God. Asking you, Father, to show us, to remind us who we are, who you yes. are. And who we are, you said we are to you, your children. There is nothing about us that you don't know, God. Yes, Father. And even when we were sinners, you gave your son for us. You died for us while we were sinners. Jesus. Now we are new creation. Thank yes, you. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord God. Father, we are your children. Father, we thank you for this time together when we can worship you we can celebrate you father you, knowing that you know us you know us through and through and you love us nonetheless mm. father we thank you for who you say we are mm. we thank you for knowing us we thank you for giving us all we need more than we need lord yes sir you equipped us father to carry on the 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 ministry of Jesus mm. and whatever you call us to do you will equip us to do it yes. thank you Lord for who you are and who we are yes God. thank you for all the sisters and brothers on the line tonight meet them at their point of need God yes God yes God please Father we are your children and we mm. ask in no other name than Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Thank you Lord. Um, Sister Sandra, I'll ask you now. You're on the list for next week communion. Are you going to be available? I know you're tra you they said you travel and now you're fully back with us. Can you lead us next week? Yes. Awesome. 
But ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Any last words, uh, Brother Joe, before we say goodbye? No, we'll continue. Amen. Next week, we're talking about the uh, getting a greater understanding of the gifts, and then we're going to look at how we are going to implement, get, get ourselves positioned so that the Holy Spirit can operate through us. We, we want to be continuing. Uh, Christina has a hand uh, question. If you're on mute, go for it. Go ahead, Sister Christy. We can't hear you. Touch your microphone. Unmute. Touch your mic. Okay, touch your mic, your mic, your microphone. The first on the one at the bottom. At the bottom. You did it last week, so we'll send a message in the chat. If you can't touch it at the bottom, send a message in the chat. Um, okay. And Colette is raising Colette. her hand. Yes, I'd just like to thank Joel for inviting me to this platform. I learned a lot. Amen. And I will be continuing to join you, the ladies and the gentlemen, um, in the future. Well, good to have you. Let's have you meet everybody on the line. How is that? Let's start okay. at the top. Uh, at, she couldn't get to unmute, but that was Sister Christine from the Virgin Islands. Um, mm -hmm. And the next one is Sister Allie, Sister Alice, we call her, from right here in Boston. Mm -hmm. Sister Monica used to be in Boston, but she abandoned us for mm -hmm. Houston, Texas, for the last couple of years. Sister Sandra, an amazing chef in our neighborhood. She's been <laughs> with us from the beginning. Um, Sister Carolyn used to be with us, but she abandoned us in New York. Um, who else is on there? Sister, Smith, Sister, Sister Sanders invited her, but we couldn't hear Sister Oh, Sister Sanders, Sa okay. Sister Glenda. Sister Glenda Alley um, is right here in Boston with us. There's a Herdis Henry. Um, and there's a S, initial SD. That's Sandra. Oh, yeah, that's Sandra, sorry. And that, there's Sister Beverly, I see a B. And Sister Beverly as well. Uh, so a couple of people on here. We do ask that when people come on at first that you put your camera up so we can greet you. Because when we did this last week or the week before, we had not seen each other's faces in two years. Uh, so that recording is a little crazy because we all went crazy, just happy uh, to once again see, lay eyes, as old people would say, lay eyes on one another. So we just bless God for this uh, means. Thank Technology you. is amazing. And nice to get to together. Everyone. Carolyn, I see the top of your head. What happened, man? Yeah. <laughs> because this is the chair that I'm sitting on. Oh, yes, go good chair. Go, 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 chair I store. Raise, I read raise platform, so I'll have to go try and adjust it so I can. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> but we love each other. Sister Collette, yes. can you tell that we love each other? And we have a good time when we come on. So we have fun. Yes, nice meeting everyone. Praise God. Yeah. Are we getting yeah, to so Nice meeting you too. So okay. seven fifteen next week we pray for night, half, night. about half an hour, um, mm -hmm. and then we turn it over to Brother Joel for the word, and then we end with communion. God bless you all. Okay. Okay. We love you week, all, everyone. Bye. Bye. Too. God bless. Okay. Bye. 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 Be on the lookout for the audio. It'll be coming soon. God bless yeah. you, Brother Joel. Yeah. Is gonna cut it right here, right now. Love you. Yeah.